This zoom out is really, really important because it yanks our consciousness out of the details of the everyday. Now, I kind of have this crazy job, career, calling, curse, occupation, whatever you want to call it, which is crying the barbaric yawp of philosophy from the rooftops of the world and trying to thunderclap people into uh, waking up from their dogmatic slumbers. And so I have this big, grand, total monster view every day. And, and I'm incredibly grateful for everyone for giving me the means, the opportunity to have this conversation with the world. It's so incredibly important. We absolutely, you know, without philosophy, we're just cunning apes with opposable thumbs and very dexterous fingers and a little bit of a post monkey expansion beta pack sitting on top of our lizard brain and our monkey brain. We, we need concepts. We need philosophy. We need virtue. We need meaning in our lives. And there's something about the endless red tape bureaucracy and details of the modern world that sands down our sense of power, our sense of potential, our sense of grandeur, grandeur. When was the last time you felt heroic? When was the last time you felt really moved and motivated and looked at your day and said, that was about as great a day as I could possibly have? Well, what happens when you get a close call? Like we've all had this one time or another. I remember when I was, um, when I was a young broke student, I used to go to bazaars and I would buy clothing by the pound sometimes because I just needed stuff to wear and didn't have any money. And I remember I was biking down there once and I took a sudden turn to the right from the median of the road and a truck just, you know, just skidded full on helium squeak, birthday clown squealing behind me and almost, I mean, I could have just been a stain on a bumper and, uh, well, you'd just be looking at an empty screen going like, this is the least exciting live stream ever. But, um, before that, I'd been thinking about, I don't know, just worrying about something in my life. And then it was like, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. You, you get that adrenaline of, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the hands of death, they're coming up to your throat and you're just like, <laughs> you just get out at the last minute. And for quite some time after that, as which happened with my cancer diagnosis, I'm like, mm, I am not going to live small, man. I am not going to live petty. I am not going to bleed away my precious pearl-like days. I am not going to be the space between the stars. I am going to be a supernova, if at all humanly possible. And I think it is possible. It's possible for me. It's possible for you, possible for everyone out there. This gives you a sense that you are going to die. It's coming. It's not a matter of if, it's simply a matter of when, and you don't know how long the when could be. And this reminds you to live. This reminds you to dig deep in human experience, to, to dig deep in courage. Because cowardice and avoiding difficult topics is always easier in the short run, but what it does is it whittles down your sense of identity, your sense of pride, your sense of self-esteem, your sense of relevancy, your sense of importance, your sense of power to be continually silenced. You know, we've got this politically correct culture out there. We've got this, oh, you say the wrong thing, you post the wrong thing, you're going to get <laughs> mushroom cloud where your for former existence used to be. And I get that. I mean, everybody's got to play the game in the Overton window and you've got to push the envelope without, you know, <laughs> uh, being a soap bubble going through a sound barrier and just, <laughs> right? I get all of that. So we all got to weigh our risks and our rewards as a whole. But I hope, I hope that... Something like this can give you a deeper and richer sense of the necessity of courage for the maintenance of civilization, the necessity of courage for the maintenance of, of pride and self-esteem. Please, please, my friends, use this opportunity to live more richly and live more deeply. Think of the people, the thousands of people who've died from this. And if they could speak, you know, if we could summon them and they could speak, what would they say to us? They would say mourn me for a short amount of time and then get busy with the business of living because mine was cut short you are still continuing all those who lie in the grave are shaking their fists at us trying to wake us up saying we all end up here please don't waste your life please don't waste your potential please don't waste waste your possibilities please extend every ounce of mental energy you can have, you can possess, that you can imagine. It's much more than you. You have much more energy than you can even imagine. Much more focus, much more brilliance, much more potential. 
please look at the falling bodies of the fallen and use them to remind yourself to wake up and to live deeply and passionately. Use this to reconnect with people. Hey, you might be home with them for quite a while. Use this tragedy judo style, right? You know, the judo, like someone comes at you and you just use their momentum to defeat them. Use these tragedies to live more deeply and live more richly. There's a great book that was the only book given to me by a very corrupt person in my life long ago. It's called The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. And in it, there is a devil. It's an older devil teaching a younger devil how to tempt people into bad actions. And the greatest temptation is inconsequentiality. The greatest temptation is to not really live, to not really exist, to waste your life in a blur of binge-watching mediocre shows and playing video games and watching porn and wasting your life and not having a family and not having children and not having a legacy, not having a meaning and not putting a Sasquatch-style boot print in the mud of the world. You're not here to fade away. Think of the incredible coincidence that exploding stars from hundreds of millions of years ago happened to coalesce in you, beautiful, bald, bipedal ape with the most magnificent couple of pounds of matter in existence, the human mind, that of all of the universe that we know of, 99.999% empty, a whole lot of helium, which doesn't do that much, and then a tiny, tiny little concentration of living matter on this Goldilocks planet. And within that living matter, there is a tiny, tiny concentration of human brains, and you happen to be in possession of one of those greatest gifts that the universe has to offer. You happen to have won the lottery for all of the exploded star snot that floats around the universe that coalesced into you. You won the lottery! You have a brain! You have these incredible hands! You have a relatively free society. You have mostly free speech. Even if you're not in America, you still have mostly free speech. You have been given the greatest gift of the human mind in the greatest time that has ever existed in the world. For us to be even having this conversation is unprecedented for 99.999% of human history. What can you do with such gifts? What should you do with such gifts? I don't know, but please do something. Please do something. Do not shame the dead by wasting your life. Only connect. Connect with your ambition, connect with your potential, connect with your courage, act on it, and connect with the people around you. And say, screw you, death. You're tempting me with fear and cowering. I'm not living under the bed. I'm taking the staircase to the stars. All right.